Hello! Hi guys, it's Inam Gafour here with the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. We're going to take a look at using the VNC app from the Play Store and see how that communicates to our PC. Now in order to go through this process you're going to need a few things. Firstly, you need to be connected up to the same Wi-Fi network as your PC. Secondly, you need the VNC server application installed on your computer. I've left the default installation completely as it is with only the password being changed to being Dasher as in the reindeer. And finally, we just need to get the VNC viewer application loaded on the smartphone. I've already got it installed so we'll get it running. And I haven't got any connections already loaded on there so this is how it looks. I'm going to hit on menu, then new and gives you the settings here what you need to fill in so the IP address of your computer so I'm just going to tap that in there it is, it's pre-populated it from previously 10.66.66.68 is my IP address I could give it a name if I wanted I could call it anything to be fair I'll call it Zion save the password in there picture quality will be automatic or it could be high I'll leave it to automatic for the time being and then we'll hit done and as you can see that's all it requires it will need a signature which you'll get from the VNC server on the computer and it needs a username and password which are left blank there because it'll ask you for those as and when you connect so I'm gonna hit connect and there we go it says continue connecting no signature has been stored for this VNC server so its identity cannot be verified the VNC server signature is blah -de blah do you wish to accept the signature and continue connecting now you could always verify the VNC server signature the VNC server is always the computer, by the way, because it's the one that's going to be essentially beaming out the display. And the viewer on the phone is always going to be just the viewer. So we hit yes to continue. I did change the password to what it comes in pre-installed with to Dasher as in the reindeer. So I've typed that in. I'm going to hit OK. And there you go. It says encrypted connection and you can see a cursor along the screen and a start button there. We'll just turn this around I'll just bring that in a little bit closer so you can see it now as you can see that's displayed the entire desktop on the screen so you've got the start menu along the bottom left there and the system tray along the bottom right and if I wanted to minimize this Chrome browser session that I've got on the PC I just navigate with my finger and minimize it as I normally would there now there is a little bit of lag because I've got it on the high setting at the moment so it appears to be laggy but on the PC it's absolutely instant I find this extremely useful for seeing what my kids are doing when they're playing on the computer if they're still playing a video game that I left them with or if they're messing around on the internet or just playing around in paint applications so because I'm a little bit lazy like that I don't want to leave my seat and just snoop around see what they're doing this way I can get to see what they're doing without them even knowing because there's no indication on the screen of the computer that someone's connected and having a look at what's going on on the screen. The only indication they have is when you start messing around and start minimizing windows or doing stuff on the screen. That's when they start to think maybe something's not quite right. This also works brilliantly with the S Pen as well so if I get that slid out the back all this does is replaces the contact that your finger would make with the screen. There's no special inputs that are replaced with the S Pen so you can't just tap on the screen and open up an icon for example because you still have to move the cursor. There's a cursor along the screen as you can see. When you use the S Pen all it does is still move around the cursor on the screen and as you can see it's not right where the S Pen is it's the same contact that your finger would make. So if I go back to the browser or just click on the start menu there you can see start menu loads if I go to all my programs, those load, and if you go back down to Chrome, that, that resumes its session as well. Now say if you're working on a document and you need to type stuff in, uh, or type something into a search engine for that matter, I'm going to load up Notepad just to register the keyboard strokes as I type those in. So what we'll do, just zoom in there, there we go, so you can see it a little bit better. So just tap in there, hit menu, that will load up a keyboard option here, we'll just tap on that and you get the standard Android keyboard. I'm just going to hit the settings there and just take it to the standard one. Here we go. Now you can type stuff in and it works as standard fine. But what I've started to notice is when you start to go towards some of the advanced functionality of the Android keyboard, and by that I mean, say if you go to settings here and go to, I don't know, writing things because it's typing those in straight away onto the screen of the computer it doesn't recognize your your text as such so if I type in hello 
So it's recognized hello there and it should have typed it in, but, whoops, wrong screen. If I, you can see there, it's typed in hello, which is not what I typed in. That's because as I'm typing it in, it's typing in what it recognizes as each character into the screen of the computer and it doesn't quite work the same. So if I remove all of that again and just type in hello and watch out what it says there. It's not quite the same and, it, and it, I can't get it to work to be fair to be exactly the same as what I'm typing in. If I'm in any other application on a smartphone, so text messaging or anything like that, then it works fine. But for some reason through VNC, it doesn't quite work as well. So the best option you have while using VNC Viewer is either use a standard keyboard as you have here. Or what I do find works really well is voice input. That still seems to work okay. So if we go to there the settings and then select voice input hello and you can see it's typed in hello as I've said it so we'll see what else it can do what's the time today you can see that's typed in pretty well as well obviously there's no space between the hello and the rest of it but that's handled it okay but I still prefer when using VNC to be using the standard Android keyboard as you can see here we'll just come out of the keyboard app here get that out of the way and then zoom out of the notepad application. But if you can put up with that slight time delay, you could also create Word documents, PowerPoint presentations. Obviously, you won't be able to stream films from your computer as you're watching them via the VNC viewer because it doesn't translate sound through to the Android device. But it's a good way to control your computer from your Android smartphone. Any questions or comments you guys have got, hit them up down in the comments section down below there. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and you like what you saw. If you haven't already done so, hit subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it's totally free. It's also down there as well. Have a good day, people, and we'll see you next time.